Right, so question three then is looking at methanoic acid reacting with bromine. So we're carrying on with rates of reaction here. Um, use a large excess of methanoic acid, uh, ensured its concentration was effectively constant throughout. During this reaction, the bromine was used up and the orange colour became less intense. And we measured the intensity of the orange colour and plotted the graph below. So, in this initial react investigation, a large excess of methanoic acid was used, and therefore the order with respect to methanoic acid was effectively zero. Using the graph, determine the order with respect to bromine. Okay, well let's have a look. If I start off here at 0 0.01, and I halve the concentration there, that gets me to that point there. If I halve it again, I'm going to go down to 0.0025, which gives me that bit there, goes there. You always do go a bit funny. Um, so, if I draw on, like so. I'm sure your line should be much straighter than mine. There we go, and down that as well. Does make it look a little bit funny. Okay, so, give it or take it a bit, that is 200 seconds, and that there is 200 seconds. So therefore, I can say um, that I've got two half-lives, two consistent half-lives of 200 seconds, and therefore it is first order with respect to um, bromine. The next thing they want me to do is uh, calculate the initial rate so this is going to be interesting, uh, right, so you need to get your tangent there, like so. So you would put your ruler there, it's just got to touch the line, try and get it to go all the way to your two axes, and then what you can do is your initial rate is going to be that distance, which is 0 0.010, over that distance, which is 250 seconds. And if you do that, let's see uh, what you get. Um, oh, well, that's it, really. So uh, that's my initial rate. Let's fun in the old calculator. So we should have 0.01 divided by 250, that gives me 4 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed per second. So that's that one in the bag. Um, and I think that's about it. What else do they want me to do? Oh, and now calculate the rate constant under these conditions. So we know it's first order. We know that rate is equal to K times the concentration of Br2. The rate we've worked out as being 4 times 10 to the minus 3. The concentration of Br2 was 0 0.01. And therefore K is 4 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0.01 and let's do that so uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0.01 gives me a rate constant of 4 times 10 to the minus 3 and what's going to be the units of the rate constant or well, rates in moles per decimeter cubed per second Concentration we know is in moles per decimeter cubed, 
So the rate constant units are seconds to the minus one. Okay, so um, we're now on to question four now. Uh, given me some names here and some pK values. What is meant by a constant lower acid? Um, it's a proton donor. Um, what is meant by the strength of an acid? Uh, in your answer, include an equation for one of the acids. It's the degree to which an acid dissociates. So, uh, if we did benzoic acid, for example, uh, the degree of which this dissociation occurs in aqueous solution. Okay, we now need to place the four acids in order of increasing strength. So what's the weakest one? If we go back to our table, um, the one with the highest pKa is acetic acid. So that's the weakest one. Um, and the one with the lowest um, is uh, pyruvic acid. Uh, so that's going to be our order. So you just basically put them in order. So it goes acetic, benzoic, lactic, lactic acid, um, and then pyruvic acid. Complete this equation when I'm mixing benzoic acid with lactic acid. So we've said that this one is the stronger acid out of those two. Um, so, um, so this is going to be the one that acts as the acid and is going to be the proton donor here. So he is going to lose the H plus and uh, benzoic acid is going to gain the H plus, like so. Uh, now we have this, the standard uh, acid equations. First of all, we're going to mix it with calcium hydroxide. This is where your uh, formulae can let you down. So calcium hydroxide, remember, is CaOH2. This is only a mono uh, protic acid, so uh, it's going to form CH3, CO, COO minus twice for the two plus calcium ion. Um, and I'm also going to make water. I'll need two of those and I'll make two waters like so. Ionic equation, this, this is the standard neutralization equation like so. pH of an acid can be calculated from its pK value, nothing to tell us. Calculate the pH um, of that concentration uh, solution. So we know that H plus concentration for weak acid, we can find by multiplying Ka with the concentration. Ka, we don't know. But Ka is minus, sorry, 10 to the minus the pKa, which in this example is 10 to the minus 2.39, which gives me 4.07 times 10 to the minus 3. So we do that, so I've now got 4.07 times 10 to the minus 3. My concentration, they told me, is 0.0150. You do that, and hopefully you get 7.81 times 10 to the minus 3. So then it's just a simple case of finding that in your pH equation, like so. So log it and change the sign. Um, so pH equals minus log to the base 10 of 7.81 times 10 to the minus 3 which gives you 2.11. Uh, notice they wanted it to two decimal places, so do that, because it gives you an extra mark. Uh, right, so they now want me to uh, draw the structure of oxalic acid. It's got two carbons, four oxygens, 
like so, and two hydrogens. So it's got to look like that. So that means I've got two hydrogen ions that can be donated. So the first one that's going to give me the first dissociation is going to be, uh, I mean, you can draw it out like so. Dissociating to just one hydrogen ion, like so, plus H plus. The next one is going to be taking uh, that boy there, and he dissociates again to give me the other H plus, like so. Right, the next question. E is um, the buffer question about magic tank. It gives you a lot of information there which you need to read through. We need to prepare a buffer of 3.55. The way you choose that is you choose your acid which has the nearest pKa. So if you go back all the way here, the one with the nearest one to 3.55 is lactic acid. So that's the one that we are going to choose. Um, however, you know it can't just be lactic acid, can it? It's also got to be the salt as well. So it's got to be um, sodium lactate as well. So the first thing, the chemicals I require are lactic acid. Um, oops, I can spell it. So lactic acid and perhaps sodium lactate, like so. Okay, now we need to do the calculation. Calculate the relative concentration of the acid and the salt needed to make this buffer. So they've given me the pH. From the pH, I can work out my hydrogen ion concentration that I need. So the pH they told me was 3.55. Um, so I will do that. That gives me 2.818 times 10 to the minus 4. Once I got that, I can put that in to my Ka expression. Ka we know is H plus times the concentration of the uh, base divided by the concentration of the acid. I know Ka from the uh, table as being 1.38 times 10 to the minus 4. I've worked out my hydrogen ion concentration as being 2.818 times 10 to the minus 4. And that is times by the concentration of the base over the acid. So, concentration of A minus over HA is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 2.818 times 10 to the minus 4, which gives you 0.49. Okay, and the final thing is comment on how valid this prediction is. Um, slightly odd. Well, the taste could come from other chemicals in the sweets, so it may not be down to the um, lactic acid.